as we all know, of course, you know, there's a lot of news of going around of uh, just a lot of evil in this world, something that we knew already. And so yesterday, as we see on TV, you know, just horrific accidents that happen and our lives change from one moment to the other. Uh, and so all I ask is, is that you continue to pray uh, for our church, you continue to pray for this country, for you to continue to pray for, for those people that just have these evil thoughts of how they want to live. Uh, again, it's, it doesn't matter who it is, but, but lives, people's lives are on the line, and we always want to make sure that we pray for people. And, and one of the things that we read in Acts, it says that no matter what was going on, the, the church prayed. And, and so I want to remind you is that it doesn't matter what we have going on before us, the church prays. Amen? So I wanted to encourage you with that today. So now I'm going to transition. So we've been going through a series called Summer Jams. Uh, what we do in this time is that we bring uh, people from the house, meaning from waves of faith, and we say, hey, I want you to use the book of Psalms to encourage our people. And then I'll invite some pastor friends that, that I'll know, and, and I'll say, hey, I, I want you to bring a word that God has uh, for you that you can share and encourage us through. And I've been very encouraged just to hear uh, every single person that's been up here, just to hear their messages of what God is speaking to them and then also through them for us to be able to receive. And so uh, what I'm going to do is today I'm going to continue that and we're going to be in Psalm 25. You can follow with me on the screen or you can go to your uh, phone and you can download the Bible app and you can follow the sermon notes there. But it says in Psalm 25, it says this. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truths and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been formed of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his ways. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will be instructed in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him and he makes known to them his covenant. My eyes are ever towards the Lord for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me, be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distress. Consider my afflictions and my trouble and forgive all my sins. Consider how many of my foes and with what violent hatred they hate me. Oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. My, may integrity and upright, uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O God, out of his troubles. Amen. Amen. Some of you are probably like, what did he just read? And maybe this is the most you probably heard. So there's, there's, um, there's 22 lines in this. And the way the, the author writes this, his name is King David. And what he does is he uses every letter of the Hebrew alphabet and he puts it before every line in order for him to memorize this scriptures. That's what he does. It's in a way for him to memorize it. Uh, and so today what I want to speak uh, on is this, is don't waste your waiting. 
Uh, maybe it's your first time here. I just want to introduce myself real quick. My name is uh, Pastor Mario Morado. I'm the lead pastor here. It's been a joy and a privilege uh, to pastor this church. And um, as I see new faces, I'm looking out and you walking in. Uh, it doesn't bring me just me joy, but it brings the people of Waves of Faith joy that you have considered Waves of Faith to be your home today. So I believe that God has a word for you. I believe that God has a word for me. I believe God has a word for every single one of us, regardless on what season we are going through. And so, so today I'm going to talk about is don't waste your waiting. And what I mean by that is that sometimes when we are waiting on something, we can become uh, frustrated and bitter and, and we start getting ugly to people. And so here David is going through a difficult time. He's in a difficult place. And, and, and what he's doing, instead of wasting his time on, on being bitter, he's seeking the Lord out. He's asking the Lord for forgiveness. He's asking God, like, show me your ways. And so this psalm would be considered a prayer of trust and dependence on God. And, and what we can do today is learn from David's example of what it looks like to wait on the Lord. And so today I hope that we learn is that we don't have to waste our waiting. And, and so, so again, David writes this psalm where using the Hebrew alphabet in order for him to, re, to remember and memorize this portion of scriptures. Uh, in that time, in, the, in, in that time, the Hebrew people would actually read it, and they would be able to memorize a lot of this. And so, uh, it's something that we can also do as well. And of course, you have to go and read the original language. But uh, there's a ways that we can study our Bible in learning how to memorize and apply the scriptures to our lives. And so, uh, one of the things that we see is that that David is he's waiting on the Lord. He's like, I, I wait for you. One of the biggest problems that we have today is that we don't like to wait. Or how many of us like to wait? I'm glad. Okay, some of y'all do like to wait. Okay, all right. I'm going to test y'all's patience. You know, one, one of the things I, I did one time in the youth room, I was a student pastor here. Um, I, I actually, we got gum and, and we put it in our mouths. And we said, we, we just gave it to them and we said, wait. How hard is it when you have a piece of gum in your mouth to not chew it. Have you ever tried that? Test your patience. Go and put it in your mouth and tell me if you don't start chewing it out of nowhere. Like you just start like, I have a lifesaver mint in my pocket right now. If I put one down, like if I put one in my mouth, I know I'm going to start chewing on it because it, it just happens. We don't like to wait. We don't like to wait. Uh, some of us, we feel in our waiting, we become uh, frustrated because we feel stuck. Maybe today that's where we are. Today, we're, we're waiting on the Lord to answer, but we just feel stuck. We feel frustrated. We feel like God is not answering our prayers. And so what do we do? We take a different route. We, we, right? We're, we're in the store, and, and why, I don't know why we went to number one, but yet number two is going faster. And what do you do? I'm going to go this way. And then sometimes you become so frustrated, you're like, I'm just going to do self-checkout myself. And you're taking longer than the worker would have done. But it's because we want things in a hurry. We want things to be fast. Um, some of you, you, this is why you love shopping on Amazon. We're not sponsored by them, but we, you, you love to shop there. Why? Because you'll, you'll pay an extra $5. Listen to this. You'll pay an extra $5 just to get the thing that you want the next day. I've done this um, where I order something and I get so impatient. Oh, it's going to take three days. And I go to the store and I buy what I think I need. And then I come back and it doesn't even work. And then the part that comes actually works. Because we don't have patience. We, we, don't, we don't have patience. And then we come to church and we're like, hold on. This pastor is talking about God will answer my prayers. And yet I feel like I'm stuck in the same place. Like this pastor is saying that all you got to do is pray and have faith the size of a mustard seed. And I still feel like I'm, I, I'm on I-35 and just stuck. And I can't get into the HOV lane because the exit was back there. I should have took the exit. Right? That's how we live our lives. We live our lives in patience. We don't know how to wait on the Lord. This um, Friday, Pastor Mike and I, we, we go to this Starbucks, and we're, we're just talking. And, and me, I'm, I'm, I, talk, I guess I talk loud. And as I'm talking to him, I, I can see somebody sitting over here to the right side of me, and they're looking this way. And, and I'm, as, I'm, as I'm talking to him, I, I just, I feel like the person is listening. You know, we're not gossiping or anything like that. We're, we're talking about the Lord. We're talking about what's next for Waves of Faith. Man, it's going to be good. We got Demo Day coming up, like, which is later. We're going to have some tacos. Man, are y'all ready for Demo Day? 
All right, let me explain. Demo day. What we're going to do is we're going to go to River Oaks. We're going to go and take out like about 10% that's left from the demo. It's furniture, a little bit of carpet, but it's a lot of furniture that we got to get out so our contractors can be ready to go on Monday morning. Like 100% of the building is primed. And so like, I mean, it's, it's moving, it's moving fast. And so I'm excited. If you want to join us today from 12 to four, I'm just throwing it in there real quick. Y'all more than welcome to go. So we're talking about that, Pastor Mike and I. Um, I'm, that's how excited I am. And we're like, hey, what's next? Oh, we're going to have a membership dinner. We should do it in August so that people that want to become members at Waves of Faith. I mean, we're just going, we're planning. And then, and then he goes, hey, so what are you going to preach on? And so we started talking. I was like, I'm going to preach on Psalm 25. And I said, man, I'm going to talk about don't waste your waiting, how to, how to wait on the Lord and how the Lord wants to instruct you, how, how he wants to show us and teach us and lead us in what we are going to do next. And so then, you know, we're like, he goes, I mean, I got to go because I started getting excited, right? And he's like, hey, I got to go, you know, I was like, all right, let's go. And so we're leaving. And as, as soon as we walk out the door and the door closes and, and we were still talking and the doors just swing open. And all I hear was, wait, 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 wait. Hey, hey are y'all are y'all like a pastors or something? And we both looked at each other like, like you tell them, you know, like I, I looked at them like you, you say we are pastor because I, I don't know what was going to happen. And then, you know, I mean, hey, you know, we'll see. We've got to fight. We've got to fight. I'm messing. There was no fighting. And this young lady says, hey, I, I was overhearing y'all. And I said, I knew you were listening. She goes, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Don't worry. I'm not offended that you were listening. But I, I felt like you, you, you were listening to what we were saying. She goes, yes, I, I heard you talking about uh, waiting on the Lord. And I feel like I've been waiting on the Lord. I, I, you know, she started telling us her life story. I'm talking about she was just letting, letting the Lord just, just, she was just speaking and just saying, this is what I'm going through. This is what's happening. But, but, but I, I'm learning, uh, how, do, how do I wait on the Lord? What does that mean? And, and what does that look like? And it was, I was just so encouraged how God uses his times like that. I want you to know this. God is always at work. Like, how did I know that I would be preaching on Psalm 25 this Sunday, knowing that I would be sitting on a Friday morning at a Starbucks and somebody's like, hey, I, I need to know what you're talking about because I need some hope right now. God is always at work work. And this is what David is doing here. He's saying, I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to trust on the Lord. And, and so for you, maybe you're praying about something, whatever your something is. Maybe some of you are like, I need a new job. Some of you are like, I need a job. Some of you are like, I need, I need, I need something. Some of us were probably in a situation that, that we're having to wait and you're getting frustrated and you're getting bitter. But yet David teaches us and he shows us what does it look like to wait on the Lord. So in the first three verses, this is what he says is to you, O Lord, I lift my soul. Oh, my God, in you, I trust. Let me not be put to shame. And listen what he says. He says, he says, indeed, in verse three, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wanly and treacherous. Look, if you are trusting in the Lord, I want to tell you today, you will not be put to shame because he is faithful. Because he is good. And so when we read the entire psalm, when, when, David, <clears throat> when we read the entire psalm that David writes in Psalm 25, never once does he sound like he's bitter. Never once does he sound like he's frustrated. But what he does sound, he says, I'm going to lean into the Lord. I'm going to trust the Lord. I'm going to follow after the Lord. Sometimes in our bitterness, what we want, we can't get so we get bitter and we make our own moves. And, and here's the thing is that I believe that David, what he does is he reminds himself to trust the Lord. He, he speaks this and he says uh, that I would trust in the Lord and I won't be put to shame. So what David is saying, he's saying, OK, God, OK, I, I'm going to go all in with you, but please don't let me put to shame. And then he reminds himself and he's like, hey, but nobody who trusts in the Lord will be put to shame. And I want to remind you today, church, that nobody who trusts, everybody who trusts in the Lord will not be put to shame. Amen. Everybody who trusts in the Lord will not be put to shame. Waiting on the Lord is, is what? It's trusting the Lord. Waiting on the Lord means to trust the Lord because, because he knows all things. He is the author of all things. And David is like, okay, I have enemies and I, and I will trust you. I, I might not be in a place where I would be. And maybe today this is where it is. Like I'm in a place where I do not want to be, but get a sweat. The Lord is faithful and he will deliver you through that season, through your waiting. And so today I want to tell you is don't waste 
you're waiting. And David might be saying, I don't have everything, but what I do have is you. In our waiting, we have to be fully surrendered. So I want to say this is don't waste your time by being anxious about everything. And so one of the very first verse, what does he say? He goes, oh, Lord, I deliver. I give my soul to you. What David is saying there, the soul is, is from who we are. Like the way you feel, like whenever you want something and you get like these little butterflies, that's your soul desiring something. And our soul should desire the Lord. And what David is saying, he goes, I give my soul to you. He's saying, I give my appetite to you. I give my soul to you. I give my desires to you. Everything that I want, I want it to be coming from the pit of my soul, but I want it to want you. Isaiah 59, verse 8 and 9, it says this, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Can, can you imagine? That's what the Lord is teaching us here. He's saying, hey, you think you have it under control? I want you to think how I think, and it's way bigger than your capacity. He's saying, my thoughts are like from here to heaven. And guess what? It's never ending. He is the author. He knows all things. We trust him with all things. So putting our trust in the Lord is not about you giving up everything. Okay? Because sometimes we're like, oh, well, I, gotta, I, I can't do all these things. No. Us trusting in the Lord is not about us giving up everything. It's about taking everything that he blesses us with to honor and glorify him. It's to honor, fully surrender my kids, my wife, my house, my money, my cars, the church, the people, everything that God blesses us with is not so that we can say, oh, look what I have. I feel comfortable. No, it's look what I have. In the Lord, I find comfort. God, do what you want with this. This is how we glorify the Lord. Sometimes what happens is that we get caught up sometimes in, in trying to get the acceptance of people. This is why we make our own moves. We, we start doing whatever we think is, oh, well, that, that makes me feel good when they look at me a certain way. I'm guilty of it. I'm not telling you something. I'm guilty of it. But what I've come to realize is that when I fully trust in the Lord, it's easier for me to say, God, you're in full control. You know all things. So if I try to do it, I'm going to mess it up. So I surrender it all to you. I love what Jesus says in chapter 4, verse 34. He says, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. I mean, he's talking about the Lord. He said, him who sent me, which is the Father, and to accomplish his work. Jesus is like, everything that I desire is not even about me. It's about glorifying my Father who is in heaven. So in our waiting, there is a blessing when we trust the Lord. Psalm 25, verse 4 through 5, it says this, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. All the day long. When's the last time you waited for something besides the iPhone? Or Samsung, if you were Samsung, if you use Samsung, just for my Samsung people out there. What is the last thing that you waited all day long? I want you, what did you feel? What were you thinking? When is the last time that you waited on the Lord all day long and had, had that like, man, hold on, I can't wait till I meet with God. When, like, man, like, we should be meeting with God every single moment. Like, like can you imagine like, how, what your day would look like if you met with God all day long? Like, as I'm preaching, you should be praying. You should be meeting with him one-on-one -on -one as, like, oh, how do you do that? Hey, God, man, just speak to whatever you want, whatever you want to speak to him, through him so that I can receive your truth. All day long. What would it look like in your life if, if, if you waited for the Lord all day long? Now, this doesn't mean you sit down and grab a bag of potato chips and watch YouTube TV. That's not what this means. Well, what he's saying is that in everything, in all things, I wait for the Lord to, to show me what is my next step, to teach me, to, to, to tell me what is it that I need to do. So in our waiting, the Lord will show us. 
He will show us, he will teach us, and he will lead us. That is his faithfulness. That is the faithfulness of God. So, so here at Waves of Faith, we have a core value. We have five core values, and one of them is this. Growth is my mindset, or growth is our mindset. I believe that God doesn't want us to stay where we are. Where you are, where you are today, God doesn't want to keep you there. He wants to grow you. He wants to mature you. He wants to help you take that next step into trusting him in what he is calling out of you. But we have to trust him. We have to believe in where he's calling. So he will show us. He will teach us and he will lead us. He won't abandon us. We have the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus would say. He goes, I'm going to leave you with the helper. The helper is the Holy Spirit. So, so when you give your life to Jesus, you, you get the Holy Spirit. Now you start hearing from the Lord and it's like, oh, this is what I have to do now. My life looks different. So I want to encourage, I want to encourage you with this is that our waiting is not wasted because in the time the Lord is always doing something with the person who is asking the Lord to show me your ways. God is not wasting his time when, when you and I are sitting there saying, God, show me your ways. Teach me your ways. Lead me in the way that I should go. He will not abandon us. He will always be with us. So when you feel like, man, I got a lot to learn. Uh, sometimes as, as believers, when we first start coming to church, we give our life to God. Man, I got a long ways to be where you are. Like, don't worry about the waiting because God is already working. Yes, yes. We, we get caught up in like, oh, I'm not where you are. I'm not on that holy level. Like, no, no, we're all righteous because of Christ. Amen. We're all made new because of Jesus. We have a relationship with the Father because of Jesus. Now what we do is we, we walk together as a church. We learn together as a church. We make the move together as a church, trusting in all the things that he does. And so for some of us, we might be thinking, I feel like God is punishing me because I feel like he's, he's withholding my, my, my blessing or he's withholding my miracle or, or he's just holding back and he's punishing me because, man, I know who I am, but yet David, but David would say, man, don't, don't remember the sins of my youth. Forgive me because you are good. And so sometimes we think that God is withholding us from, from something, but I, I want to tell you this is no, that he's growing you into who he knows that you should be. It's not that he's with, sometimes, okay, I'll, I'll, let me give you this. If you would have given me a million dollars 20 years ago, I would have probably been buying a car and spending my money at the club. Now, if you give me a million dollars today, I would buy a Lamborghini. I'm just playing. <laughs> no, if you gave me a million dollars today, what we would do is we would build God's kingdom here on earth. Yeah. Amen. So if you're a millionaire in the room, I'm going to be praying for you. <laughs> or if you're online listening. David says, Lord, show me, teach me, lead me. And so what David is implying here is that he wants to have this closer relationship with the Lord. He, he wants to have this closer relationship with the Lord. So sometimes we think that, oh, we already know that. Let's move on to the next. No, we already know that. What else do I, how else do I grow in that area, Lord? How else do I grow in a deeper, loving relationship with you? Because I feel like, yeah, I might know that and I do it often, but man, I want to know. Man, if, if you're praying and you're always praying, man, pray more. If you're reading your Bible and you think, man, I, I read too much, no, read some more of God's word. If you think you've gone enough Sundays to church, man, go to more Sundays to church. If you feel like whenever we have wave groups, we have small groups, if you feel like, man, you know what, I, I do all this, man, continue to grow in the Lord in any way that he can because the deeper that you go in with him, the deeper your relationship, the, the deeper the roots are, the more easier it is that you don't just get knocked over on whatever people tell you. And this is what David is telling us. is like, hey, I know I got some enemies. I know I got some things that are not going my way, but I trust in the Lord and I will wait on him because I want him to show me. I want him to teach me. I want him to lead me because his ways are better than my ways. Proverbs 14, 12 says this. There is a way that seems right to man or to a man, but it ends, but it's in is the way to death. There's some things that we do that are like, man, this, this feels right. But all it does is it leads us to the place that we did not want to be at, a place that we did not want to find ourselves at. 
And so maybe today is like, man, I've been trying to do all these things. I've been trying to work the way I think I need to do it. I've been trying to lead my family my way. I want to lead it God's way. God, show me, teach me, and lead me so that I can live a righteous life, so that I can glorify you with it. In our waiting, I want you to remember the Lord's promises. It says, remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions according to your steadfast love. This is verses 7 through 14 in Psalm 25. For the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Verse 8, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. While you're sinning, God is still teaching you. While, while we are trying to do our things, God is showing us. While, while we're trying to live our own life, he's leading us. But we have to to wait on him. We have to learn how to wait on him. And this is what it says in verse 9. He leads the humble in what is right. We have to be humble before the Lord in order for us to see him at work. We have to. Be. Have you ever tried to teach somebody who's stubborn? And if you never have, maybe you're the person. Like, have you ever tried to teach somebody like, hey, like, hey, let me do it. Like, no, 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 I'm going to do it this way. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't elbow anybody. And I think sometimes that's how we are with the Lord. Yeah, God, I know I need to love that person, but I'm just going to do it later. Yeah, God, I, I know you. I already know that. I already know that scripture, and, and you keep telling me to do it. I, it's okay. We'll be all right. But yet, here it says, he leads the humble in what is right, and he teaches the humble his way. When we humble ourselves before the Lord, he will teach us, he will show us, he will lead us in the way that we should go. And, and there's a promise when we are fearful and we are, we are humble before the Lord. It says in verse 10, all the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. Verse 13, his soul shall abide in well-being and his offspring shall inherit the land. Listen to that. When we are humbly, when we are saying, God, I want you to teach me. I want you to show me. There's promises. There's blessing. Is that, that they will inherit the land, meaning our kids will reap the benefit of having this intimate relationship with the Lord. I want you to think about this. We're, we're not just impacting 100 people in here. We are impacting generations upon generations upon generations. That one day when we're no longer here, there'll be somebody saying, hey, we're preaching the word because many years ago, there were some people that were faithful and they said, hey, we're going to make the move to River Oaks. We're going to trust God. We're, gonna, we're not just going to grow this, but we're going to reach people for God and his kingdom. And our kids will be like, man, I remember when we used to go door knocking. I remember when we used to just bring people in and pray pray over them. I remember seeing my mom, my tia, my aunt praying over people, my dad uh, passing the usher basket. I want you to understand that, that, that we, our kids, us, we are ripping the benefit of somebody who is faithful. He said, I'm going to trust the Lord. I'm going to trust the Lord. So, so we have this confidence is this, that the Lord does not want to hide his ways from us. Sometimes I don't, I don't know what God wants from me. He doesn't want to hide it from you. He wants to show it to you. He wants you to walk in righteousness. He wants you to walk in faithfulness. He wants us to follow him. But we can only follow the Lord when we are humble. We can only follow the Lord when we are humble. So in our waiting, we are becoming who God is calling us to be. And in your waiting, you can ask for more. David says, Father, forgive me. Father, lead me. In your waiting, you can ask for more. You can ask for more faith because faith is a gift from God. God gives us the faith. We can ask for patience. We can have, ask for humbleness. We can ask for, for courageousness, right? Or courage, is that a word? Courageousness. So be courageous. We can ask for salvation. Maybe today you're saying, God, I need some salvation. I need some deliverance because he's faithful and because you come to him humble. He will answer. I'm going to close this with, with this verse 14. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. Let me read that again. The, the friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him and make 
and he makes known to them his covenant. Now the fear is not like I, 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 I. It, it's it's a it's a fear of reverence. Like man, God, you are holy. You're a good God. I am a sinner that is broken and I am in need of deliverance. I am in need of salvation. I am in need to be patient. And I only, you are the only one who could give that to me. In a different translation in the message, it says this, God friendship is for God worshipers. They are the ones he confides in. That, that is the secret of what David is telling us here. Is the secret to have this relationship with the Lord, to have this friendship, to have this God-fearing relationship with him, it is to be humble. It's to, it's to fear the Lord because his ways are better than my ways. That is the secret on how we grow in our relationship with the Lord when we are waiting. So church, I want to tell you is don't waste your waiting. Now, maybe today, I believe that your waiting doesn't have to feel wasted anymore. And this means that you put your full trust in the Lord. This means that, that you put your full trust in who Jesus is and what Jesus came to do. And that he is the son of God and that he came and he, he died and he rose again to defeat sin to defeat death, that when we believe in him, when we profess our faith in him, we are no longer damned, separated from God. But now we have this friendship. We have this relationship with the Lord. Your life no longer has to feel wasted because when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. You are a, a new thing, meaning you have a new Life. It says that the, the old is gone and the new has come, meaning you no longer live the same because you live as if what David is saying. I fear the Lord. I wait on him. I'm no longer going to waste my waiting and get bitter because the Lord is doing something great. And so maybe today is that you, you say, I'm going to put my full confidence and I'm going to start walking with the Lord differently. That you start walking and trusting in him for who he is and what he has done on our behalf. It brings me so much joy to be able to see lives change, not because of what I do, but because what the Lord is doing through me, through you, through us, to make a kingdom impact, not only in here in Diamond Hill, but where God has taken us into River Oaks. And so I want to encourage you is, is fill out a connect card. We have a, a, a women's ministry or a men's ministry that would love to, to reach out to you. We have our student ministry. If you want to give your life to the Lord, like fill out a connect card. We want to be a part of your spiritual journey. We want to encourage you how to fear the Lord, how to walk humbly and to trust him in all things. Because we're making the move. And we're, we're waiting on the Lord. Let me finish with this real quick. I told him I was going to get done quick. So, so. A, a year ago, oh, I, I, I mean, I'm going to remember uh, I said, we're going to be moving over the River Oaks Easter 2024, right? And everybody's like, oh, man, that's quick. And we're going to be moving. Why are we not moving yet? What is this? What is that? And I had to say, man, God, I have no control over this. You're, you're going to have to, like, I'm going to have to just trust you. It's your timing. And when I did that, guess what? I started hearing other people say, man, God has it all under control. God already knows what he's doing. God already knows when we were going to be over there. Like, I didn't even say anything, and God was just confirming, was confirming that. So during that time, there was a church. Listen, listen to how the God, God, our God works, our Lord works. So in that, I had met with another pastor, and I said, hey, um, what do you think about, you know, leasing out our building as you're growing? And then we go from there. I said, yeah, man, let's do that. When are you going to be out of the building? Man, Easter 2024, we're working on it. And the next one, hey, are you going to be out here? You're going to be out No, bro, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I say, you know what? Honestly, I, I really don't know no more. I'm just trusting God. He said, all right, cool, man. No worries. We'll, we'll work it out. Tell me why, like two weeks ago. God didn't move them in here, but they, God moved them into their own building. Come on. That's good. Like, like now they no longer have to rent out a little space where only like 40, 50 people. Now it's like a, I'm talking about like a massive building where they're going to do outreach. They're going to, they can sit like two or 300 people. Like, I mean, that is great. He could have, we could have done and said, no, bro, just come in here. We do that. We could have done what we thought was right, but the Lord already has something working. 
And so I want to encourage you today that God is working in your life. He's already doing something. You might not see it, but he has it ready for you. You might not believe it, but guess what? He has it there for you. We have to trust him. We have to trust him together. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much that you encourage us with just things that you are doing in ways that you are moving in our families, in our, in our finances, in, in this church. And that today, that today, Father, today our waiting stops where we're trying to wait on when our life is going to get better because today when we put our faith in Christ, our life is already better because when we trust you, our life is already great. When we know you, our life is already changed, Father. And so today I ask that we become a church, that we become a church that trusts you, a church that loves you, a church that wants to be moved by you, that no matter what it takes, we will do it because you are with us. Father, and I believe that you've already gone ahead of us to prepare the way, Father. So we trust you. So we ask that you show us, that you teach us, and that you continue to lead us in where you're calling us. Father, may you be glorified. May you be magnified. Amen. Amen, amen.